However you like to create your work, whether it's in a sketchbook and you like to complete uh, physical sketchbook pages, um, and that could be suitable whether you're creating um, art-based work or even photography-based work. You might prefer to put everything into a sketchbook um, as you go along, including your research, your development work, um, and create your pages in there. You might be um, having pieces of larger artwork that doesn't quite fit in your sketchbook, and you might prefer to mount some larger pieces um, on larger mount board or in frames um, to really kind of show off your final pieces of work for the end of a module. However you present your work is completely up to you. However, you need to be able to send your work as an electronic portfolio uh, for your submission, and that's for me, for your assessment, and also for the awarding body, NCFE, so that they're able to uh, moderate your work as well. So we've got a couple of ideas, but um, it's absolutely fine to use whatever software, whatever methods you would prefer to use um, to create your electronics uh, portfolio. But I'm just gonna run through um, Canva with you because I think it's a really user-friendly piece of software. There's a um, perfectly good free copy. So um, if you haven't got a program like PowerPoint or um, Pages, and you don't particularly want to pay for another subscription, um, Canva would probably be a brilliant option for you to use. So I'm just gonna run through a couple of basics so that you're able to create your portfolio um, using that. So the first thing that you're going to need to do is to get your physical work um, digitalized. So one easy way of doing that is by um, photographing your work. So it could be as simple as just photographing your work. It could be and sending off um, those sketchbook pages in, or it could be that you're going to take images of your individual pieces of work and then put them together um, and create a sketchbook, an electronic sketchbook page um, on the computer. Um, so that's really up to you how you want to work, but um, I'm gonna go through some basics using Can Canva so that's an option for you. So I've just created a new account with Canva just because I wanted to see the difference really as I've got Canva Pro. So this is the free version. Um, it's a web-based uh, design platform meaning that you will need uh, internet access to use it. You have your login. So the great thing is that if you like to work on several different uh, devices, if you're gonna work on a tablet or phone or uh, computer or laptop, um, when you log in, I, it, it's all linked as it's all online. Um, so that's quite a handy thing. So on the left-hand side here, you've got your home page. So if I click on here, this is where it will take you. And this is where all your files. So you can see I've got no designs here as it's um, a new account, but all my designs would be here and I would be able to just click on them to open them. Uh, you can organize them into folders, which is a brilliant idea and something that I need to do pretty soon because I've got thousands and thousands of uh, folders and files all on my home page. So they're the two things that really I'm going to um, show you. You don't really need to worry about these just yet. Um, so if you had lots of different designs, you could search through and find your design by typing in a keyword, perhaps what you've saved it as, or perhaps a keyword that is featured on the document. So it's um, quite sensitive in its um, searching. So that's quite good. I'm gonna create a new design. Now, this is for our electronic portfolio. Um, I would like it landscape. I'm thinking about it like a um, A3 sketchbook double spread page. So that's what I've got in mind. Now, I could just go to um, A4 because actually it's not gonna make any difference. The proportions are gonna be exactly the same, but hey, I'm gonna type in A3. I'm thinking I want it landscape. So it gives you 
different suggestions. Now you can later on come up with your own specific sizes. If we just have a look, it gives you suggestions of sizes and proportions that you might be interested in. So for example, if you're creating a design um, for any kind of social media or for something specific, they might have already an option for you. As I say, I'm just going to type in A3. It comes up with some more options and I'm going to choose the landscape. So here's my page. Um, as it's my first design, it's been quite helpful. It's suggesting that I use a template to start off, which you could do. But I'm just going to skip this for now because um, we're just going to start with a blank sheet. Now I'm going to talk through just the basic tools that you're going to need because there's thousands and you don't want to be listening to me for hours and hours. Um, Canva is one of those great things that the more you use, the more you learn um, and it's kind of like have a little play um, and work out what you can do. It's really quite uh, intuitive, I found personally. I've used Photoshop uh, for many years. Um, I found this a little bit more, dare I say it, user friendly um, and just easier for you to get started if you haven't really had much experience with design work before. More similar to what you would use or how you would use an app on your phone, for example. So um, this top bar here, um, here where we can we can rename, so um, electronic portfolio, Debs. Um, I and this is where we can uh, download if you want to save or send your work um, you'll have to use this share button so um, yeah I, I remember right at the beginning when I first used this being a little bit confused of how do I actually save my work we well, have to go to share um, and then download um, and, and then you can name your work so on the left hand side you've got these main tools um, down here there's absolutely tons of apps that you can try again I think that's something perhaps for another day we're going to concentrate on these other icons and tools so as it's our electronic portfolio we want to show off our work so the first thing that we need to do is um, upload our images that we've taken of the work that we've already completed, our sketchbook work that we're going to turn into an electronic portfolio. So I'm just, there's a couple of ways we can do this. You go to uploads. Now here I can take um, images from my social media, Facebook, Instagram. I can use my um, Google Chrome or Dropbox um, or I can just go to upload files if I'm on my computer um, and choose the folder and I can drag it over as well so if I go to upload files I know that it's in my downloads and I'm just gonna double click and it will pop this image here okay another way I'm gonna just show you so I've um, I took a load of photographs of my iPad and I um, just sent it to my computer. They're here on my uploads. I'm just gonna drag them over and just drop them here, drop files to upload. So it, they're all just gonna pop themselves over there. They might take a few moments, especially as I've got quite a few uploaded. So um, you might just want to show your sketchbook pages and you might have completed all of your work in a sketchbook and all you want to do is pop all your photographs of each double spread page um, and kind of get it into a format that you can upload onto the portal. So you can do that using Canva quite simply. Now, a couple of uh, hints and tricks. We talked about making sure when we took our photograph, it was of a bird's eye position. Make sure that there's plenty of lighting, although we can do minor changes on the computer. Um, but 
remembering you're showing off your work. It's going to be your assessor, me that's going to be looking at your work and possibly a, a moderator from NCFE as well as um, an internal moderator as well to look at your work. We want to be able to um, uh, see the best of your work. We want to be able to see it nice and clearly and we want to be able to appreciate everything that you've done uh, and really appreciate all your hard work. So kind of my main tip here is make sure it's nice and clear and I can see your work. If you've got writing, um, put it into a format where I can see it. It's not going to be any good if I just stick all my photographs on one page. I do want it in one document, but you can have as many pages as you like. So here there's an add page at the bottom and you can duplicate pages if you've got a nice background, um, made a mistake, you can just delete it. I'm just going to remove that. So if I wanted a very simple electronic portfolio, I just want my pages. I want it nice and large on my page on my digital page and I want to be able to see my work. So you might want to just crop. And so this is where, where you've got an image that's highlighted. So you can hear I've clicked on something else. So my image is no longer highlighted. So if I go onto the image that I want to um, manipulate or do anything to, I just click it and I've got these circle dots that will allow me to change the size while keeping the image in proportion. Um, and these other kind of rounded oblong shapes um, I can crop. So I don't have to, you know, with other programs, go to crop and then um, and then pull these in. It allows me to do that just by clicking on the image, which is quite cool. And I could just fill the, fill the page. So it fills the, um, my portfolio page nice and clearly. Now, if you had the pro version, um, one thing that you'd be able to do is remove the background. So you can see my, um, my wooden table that the sketchbook is lying on. It would probably just um, delete all that around the edges if I was to use the background remover. But, um, this is a pro feature, so I'm not going to be able to do that today. Uh, I could, if I wanted to kind of neaten it up, I could set the image as a background. Or, let's just undo that. So just go to detach. Or I could pull in the crop to remove the edges. and then fill the screen. So you might want a um, background color. So I'm just click clicking on the background page. It's white at the moment, and you can see this colored, um, multicolored uh, square pops up, and I could choose a solid color as my border. You've got some gradients if you wanted something a little bit quirky. Um, or we could just have a quite a simple background. You can see here we've got default colors. You could choose your own color by clicking there and you can literally choose whichever color you wish. Um, or Canva does this thing where if you're in the middle of something or if you've got an image or a photograph already on your page, it will suggest key colors that it has selected from that image, which can be really quite handy if you want to start building a color theme. So if you chose one of those images, you know that it would go with the, th the color theme already there with that image. So that's a very simple uh, portfolio page. Another way of thinking about your portfolio pages as it is as an, an extension, if I can say that right, as an extension as of your sketchbook, meaning um, thinking about how you compose your work, thinking about the colours, thinking about the layout, presentation. Um, it could be that you're adding annotations or titles, so thinking about the font, 
Um, and really kind of selecting those details to make the most of your presentation. So again, I'm just gonna go through these basic uh, tools so that you're able to do that. So the first thing is, let's get some images down on the page of what we'd like to, to include. So, one image. I quite like being able to see the frayed edges, so I'm just gonna crop it to neaten, so I'm getting rid of the ed edges of the pages, but I really like that frayed um, hessian. So I'm keeping that. I would start getting some things down on the paper um, before finalizing your layout because you might then have other images or other things that you want to include. So on this page here, I want to crop this section and I also want to crop this as well. So while I've got the image highlighted, I'm gonna to go to these three dots. This will give us quite a few options. Um, there's all sorts of things I can do here. I can um, work out where I want in the order of the images. So if you were to think about each image as separate pieces of, um, I would say paper, but see-through paper. So think of your image on like a piece of see-through plastic or layered up on top of each other. Um, whichever's on the top is going to then overlap on top of the things underneath it. So that's quite an important uh, tool to know where it is. Um, and there's other things that we can do like duplicate. So I want two of these because I'm going to crop one to leave this image or this piece of work, this sketch, which actually was an ink drawing on Hessian. Um, and then I stitched into it again on the sewing machine. And you can see the images that I'm selecting and how I'm laying it out is all telling a story. Now I might decide that actually I've got too much here. Um, I'm gonna, do you know what, I'm gonna, I can see here where I'm really focusing on these folds. I'm gonna duplicate that again and just really enlarge that. That's the best, the great thing with uh, using something digitally is that you can um, copy, paste, enlarge different sections without you having to redraw it with a click of a, click of a button. So now I've got a couple of bits on my page. I would like to rejig it. Um, I'm looking at the borders. I'm thinking I'm quite close to this edge, but I've got a larger edge over here. So I'm gonna move that. I would like roughly the same either side. And then I'm gonna align those up. Could you see when I uh, move this drawing, um, it told me that it was lined up with the image above with those red dots. Um, and that again is a really important feature. I'm gonna use that again. I'm going to uh, enlarge this uh, piece of work. I'm gonna pull it out until I see those red marks pop up. So I know that it's um, the same width. There we go. Um, I'm gonna move these along again. I wanted these the same height and the same width. If you remember, my image was quite small. I'm not sure if I remember to show you what I did, but I um, moved it until it was the same height as this image. And I could tell that by those dotted red, red um, lines. And there's something else. There's It's called um, snap guides. So it will try and be helpful. Um, and you'll find that it'll want to go into a place where it makes sense mathematically. So here it kind of snaps to, um, it's come up in pink and it says 0 0.6. 
it shows that that distance between the image here and this image and the image here and this image are the same. So again, quite useful tools to making sure that it, the presentation is good and uh, it's all laid out nicely. So again, I'm gonna extend this until it's the width of this image here. And then I've got a little space here. Um, I'm not sure what to do with it. So do you know what? I'm gonna put some color swatches there. So that here I'm gonna use my elements. Now elements, I can add any kind of element to my page. Now, if you really wanted to, you could add some graphics. If you've got some kind of a collage page, but just be careful and make sure that it's relevant. Um, they're quite fun to do, but again, is it relevant to your work? It wouldn't really make sense. Um, so, but if you're putting together a, um, a journal book or maybe you're looking at florals or maybe you know looking at a certain theme you could have a look at the graphics and see if there was anything else that you could use think of it as additional research it's not cheating using images from here it's like um it would be the same as looking at an artist's piece of work and including that on your image um as well so what am I looking for? I'm looking for a square. So I'm looking for some simple shapes now. So I'm just going to type it in the graphics and see what comes up. Um, so I want a square because I'm going to do some colour swatches. I just want a box. Now, while this is clicked, you can see... I've got a black outline and a white centre. So I'm just gonna click on the white centre. Um, and I'm going to pick out some key colours from my images um, that I want to highlight. I'm gonna do that again. So I'm just, I could go to um, copy or on my Mac, I'm using Command and C, but it will show you here what um, it, you need to use. Again, click on my image I'm clicking on the color and I'm choosing a different image oh do you know I'm gonna go for one more actually I'm gonna go for the third I'm looking for something that ties it all in okay so there's another um, sketchbook page. Let's have a look at my uploads and see what I'm going to be adding here. I want to show my developments now. So I've taken a photograph. I took the image landscape, but actually it's a portrait photograph. So what do I do? I've added the um, image to the page and we can just twiddle it around using those. Um, arrow that button here with the arrows looking a little bit like a yin yang so I'm going to have my printed actually it's not, it wasn't a print this one actually was an ink and stick drawing and again some development work not everything you might want some of it might you might want to keep it as quite clearly a snap from your sketchbook and that's absolutely fine too. I'm just going to keep that simple and have it next to each other but what I am going to do is just make the images the same height and width. I'm going to make sure that the edges are the same to the side. You don't always have to make sure the top and bottom are equal though because actually some things look a little bit better just a tad higher um, on the page. So, but that's just personal preference. So again, I could have just a very simple uh, portfolio page where I've got my images here. What about adding some text? So there is an icon here, quite easy. I've got my um, text. Now, there'll be some in kind of already packaged 
text sections here. Feeling fancy that you can use. Oh, that might be a bit much. Now you can see here, there's things that I've got a little crown on. That means you need the pro version to be able to use it, but there's plenty here for you to be using that you don't necessarily need the pro. Um, let's just go to add a heading and like in the same kind of format that you've probably been used to already, you can just choose from many different fonts. So, um, just make sure. Now the handy thing is it use quite, sorry, it's quite easy to click on something that you didn't want to click. So you just go to the undo button and it will pop it back. So now to move my font, I need to click on the text and then I can move it around. Let's create a new page. You'll notice that as I had a background color, when I add a new page, um, it just automatically fills that for you, but you can remove it if you wish. Um, that is up to you. It's just Canva trying to be um, intuitive and helpful. So let's go back to our sketchbook pages. Um, and for this one, actually, I think I am going to duplicate and remove the spine just to make it a little bit more. S um, what else would I like to add onto this page? I'm actually gonna go back to these. Or did I include them there? No, I'm gonna include these because I feel like they would all go together. Um, and I'm going to copy and paste so that I can move them around individually if I want to. I'm not tied by having to keep them as blocks, but I do want them roughly the same size. So I'm just putting them next to each other um, to the same size, just because I like things in the same size. Now I did have a sketch but I'm not sure if I can see it. I'm gonna have a little play around with this and see if it's salvageable, but I don't think that it is. And to be honest, I'm not sure on the pro version how much tweaking I can do. So let's have a look. I'm gonna to go to edit photo um, and see what I'm able to do. It might be a pro um, feature. So here's different effects as we talked about the background remover or you can put filters on. I'm just going to go to adjust. Um, again you can then change the brightness, contrast, see if I can salvage this little sketch by just sharpening it up. Okay, so I've got a little sketch there. That might be salvageable. So, what's going to be my showstopper piece? I quite like this piece. Actually, this was a drawing with bleach. Um, so, I wouldn't recommend it unless you have got an adult facilitator with you, some gloves, um, a protective surface or protected surface um, and it's in a well ventilated area um, again and as long as you don't mind your brush but it was a page with um, 
I think it was using food dye actually rather than inks and then I just painted with a little bit of um, you know thin cheap bleach over the top but again I wouldn't suggest it unless you've got help with that one but it was a fun technique I'm just playing around now with where I want everything and actually pop that here I'm going to copy and paste this page the same and there we go so I've got four images now I want to enlarge these so rather than doing what I just did all over again treating them individually I'm just going to highlight all four images so I'm just going to click somewhere on the background drag my selection over those images and click group now whenever i click onto them it's going to treat them as a group of four images rather than separate images so now i've done that i'm gonna by eye Add those onto a page so again quite quite a simplified page I'm gonna add that there I might add some do you know I think I'm gonna remove that completely <laughs> after all that I'm gonna add some collar swatches I think so I'm just gonna copy and paste those three change those colours so let's see what have what has Canva picked up for us that's quite nice really okay so again I might want to add um, a title over the top so you would go to text here choose what would be suitable Try and think of a theme of your work, um, you know, for example, unless you're doing drawings of shiny robots, I wouldn't have like a robotic style of font, for example. So just, just be a little bit choosy. Um, I'm just going to go for, oops, a simple heading. Now, particularly if you're I can't remember whether I've mentioned this before, but particularly if you are using, um, sorry, if you're completing an art course, you might not want to add um, titles to everything. It doesn't necessarily need it. Titles can be quite useful. Um, if you're doing more of a design-based art subject, I'm thinking textiles, I'm thinking graphics, even photography, it might make a bit more sense to start adding titles to everything. But um, for an art portfolio they might not be needed so I'm just going to remove that one because I've decided I've, I've changed my mind I don't want it there anymore so I've got a couple of pages created just from the sketchbook images so you can see I'd created the sketchbook I worked within the sketchbook to create my work it wasn't overly neat and presentable um, but hey I wanted to make my um, electronic portfolio an extension of that and by thinking about laying out, cropping, maybe take repeating the same image over and over again, but just taking a section out of it um, to enlarge, I've created 
um, four pages that I quite like the look of. So now what do we do? We've, we've got it on Canva. How are we going to save it? How are we going to send it? Um, so what we would need to do is go to share. You would download it. So this would download your file onto your device. So I click on here. You can choose the file type. Now, if I was doing an image for social media, I would probably leave it as a PNG. I'm going to save it as a PDF because I am doing this um, to be able to upload nice and easily onto the portal. Remembering if it's a PDF, I don't need to have that piece of software. So if you're using a program, and not maybe not even a, an obscure program, but a specific program that you're using, I don't have to have that same program to be able to open it up. So, for example, if you send me a PowerPoint document and you save it as a PowerPoint document, I can only open it up if I have PowerPoint. Now, I do have PowerPoint, so I can open it up. But if I wasn't to have PowerPoint, I wouldn't be able to open that file. However, when you save in PowerPoint, there's an option to be able to save it as a PDF. Just like in Canva, you can choose to save it as a PDF. Now there's the PDF standard and there's PDF print. The print will save it as a higher quality. Um, if you were going to send this portfolio off to be printed by um, a printing company, I would choose a PDF print version, but it's for the portal. I'll just go with PDF standard. And then you can select the pages that you wish to um, send or save I would like all of them click download so this is going to go into my downloads folder and from there I can save it onto my computer wherever I wish to save and I would also be able to upload it onto my portfolio so if I just go to my downloads It's going to open up as a PDF and oops. this is what I would see if you were to send it to me. So I would be able to just scroll through your work, just get rid of that, and be able to see all the lovely work that you've completed. So I hope that's been useful. I hope I haven't rambled on too much. But if you're using Canva for the first time or would like a free option of a um, kind of design software where you can easily create your portfolio pages, I just think that is a brilliant option. So I'll leave you there. Thank you and goodbye.